and Ezekiel faced people whose faces glared right back at him. He ministered to people that glared right back at him, and they attempted to intimidate this man as he ministered. And God said to him, look, this is what you're going to do. You're going to set your face like a flint. And if you don't set your face like a flint, I'm not going to work for you. You're not going to cower down. You're not going to turn back. Let them do what they're going to do. But set your face like a flint. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. The battle is the Lord's. If you fight back, He will not fight for you. If you take matters into your own hands, you have just released the hands of God from the matter at hand. Let Him fight that battle. That's hard. It's hard not to answer back. It's hard not to fight back. Even, even if you're going to fight back, as what the psychologists say, passive, aggressive. That's me. I'm a Dutchman. My brother and I joke. You mess with the Dietrich. I'm leaving you out of this, Sister Dietrich. <laughs> you mess with the Dietrich, we can alienate you better than anybody in the world. I had a group of people in one of our churches really don't know, I'm telling you. It was a hard battle. And you know those people were these same people that worked against me, that fought me, that had their little meetings behind my back and were plotting against me. Do you know what really irritated them more than anything? That I didn't shake their hand after the Sunday morning service. Brother Hal Foster said to me, Dave, you gotta set your face like a flint. You've got to play it when you're hurt. And you've got to reach out and still greet them on the way out the door. That's hard. That's hard. What did Jesus do when he faced these things? He kept loving. The night that he was betrayed, he took bread. He gave it to Judas. He fed Judas. Right. He served him communion the night in which he was betrayed. What amongst you shall betray me? I would have taken it a step further. It's him. Get him. Yeah. I'm Jesus. They all said, is it I? Is it I? Jesus kept his mouth shut. And he said to Judas, what you're going to do, go do it. Remember in the garden the audacity of Judas as he came up and he kissed the Savior. What did Jesus say? He didn't say, get your filthy lips off of me. Back off, you betrayer. He said simply to him, dost thou betray me? He kept loving. He told me like him in suffering and in rejection. And on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Are you sure about that, Jesus? Are you sure that they don't know what they're doing? Seems to me they've been plotting this all along. What he was saying is they don't have the full grasp of what's happening in them. They don't realize they're being used of Satan. And also... Who, who crucified Jesus? The Roman government? The Jewish hierarchy? The religious hierarchy? Our sins? But also God. Yet we did esteem him smitten and straight of God. It's hard to look at the sufferings of Jesus and not cry. It's hard. It's hard. You have been under it. Immense pressure, many of you, if not all of you. I have passed through times that I would not wish on a dog. I have passed through times that it was not my choice to drink of that cup. And it's hard, but what's the outcome of that? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and it is marvelous. Marvelous yes. in our sin. Praise God. 
How did he handle that? He looked forward beyond present suffering. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. We quoted from there a few moments ago. But in chapter 12 and verse 2. Looking unto Jesus. You're passing through these things, what you need to do? You need to gaze your sight and fix your sight unto Jesus. Amen. The author and the finisher of our salvation. Who for the joy, look at the words that the writer of Hebrews picks here. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. That word char in the original language is the word, uh, the word joy is the word charm. It means the calm, pleasant delight. See, Jesus had the ability to look away from circumstances and look to the reward that was to come. Praise God. Praise God. There is no reward without a reproach. There is no crown without a cross. There is no resurrection without a death. You can sum up the life of Christ simply this way. The pre-existent Christ, the, Christ, the pre-incarnate Christ before the baby in Bethlehem. We believe in the pre-incarnate Christ. Amen. We believe he was God a very God and man a very man. We believe that he created all things and by him all things consist. I like that verse in Colossians. I'll keep it in the book. I won't take it out. So Amen. Amen. His virgin birth, his sinless life, his miracles, his substitutionary work on the cross, his bodily resurrection. We are people of the resurrection. Amen. His ascension, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing? For the same Jesus in like manner shall return unto you. There's one more. His exaltation. Wherefore he is now seated at the right hand of God. Amen. And at the name of Jesus, every tongue shall confess Amen. that he is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Amen. Son of the living God. Praise Praise God. God. Praise God. You see, for him to get to the place where he was seated at the right hand of God, he had to be spit on. Come on he had to be rejected of men. He had to be despised and hated. He had to give his back to the spiders. He had to suffer alone. He had to endure that moment on the cross where he no longer sensed his father. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He could have called 10,000 angels and ended it right there, but he did not. Praise God. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Yes. And he's seated at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. And thank God he is, for yes. he ever liveth to make it. Intersection for us. The stone that the builders rejected Hallelujah. has become the chief cornerstone. And it is marvelous. It is marvelous Hallelujah. in our sight. Yes. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Praise God. And by his help and by his grace. Whatever the world may throw at me, whatever Satan may hit me with, I will throw myself upon the rock. Hallelujah. Remember what he said, he who falls on the rock, the rock you know, shall be, shall be humble. Amen. But upon him whom the rock falls, they shall be drowned. Right. Listen, throw yourself onto the rock. Amen. Tonight. Praise God. Praise are, you, God. are you feeling rejection from family? from friends, on, from co-workers, that the, I don't want to discourage you and have you call off sick tomorrow, but I will tell you this, the most uh, popular place Satan likes to work is in the workplace. Sure. Some people are a total piece of it. But I'll tell you this, don't fight, keep loving, Keep praying. Keep going after God. And I don't mean to offend, but I'll tell you this. You give some people enough rope, they'll hang themselves. 
I don't want them to hang themselves. But listen, you're going to endure such a contradiction. I like Jesus. Amen. I'm so glad for what he did. Amen. He's such a great example. Oh, My daughter texted me this week. And she said, if God is Jesus' father, does that mean he's our brother? Absolutely. Amen. Yes. We are heirs and joint heirs together yes. in Christ. I pray God that in every trial, in every hurt, when you're under immense pressure, you'll find Jesus. I'm going to close with this thought. In my first church that I pastored, what did I know? What do I know now? No. I, I tell them at work, I'm, I quote Forrest, I'm not a very smart guy. What do I know? But in my first church, I, I pastored, it was pastoring my home church, had only been, he's only four years older than me, and that was his first pastor. He had been a youth pastor in a couple places. But I came home one time to visit my mother, and I sat down with my pastor, and I told him, I said, I don't know what's happening. I said, I uh, I go downstairs to, it wasn't much of an office, it was just a little cut out of a hole in the wall, really. And I would pray during the Sunday school hour, and I would get to the point where I didn't want to get out from underneath the desk and to go upstairs. And I told him, I said, I would get upstairs, and as I went into the sanctuary, I would have rather taken a beat. I got to the front of the building and I got to the platform. When my foot hits the first step, I feel like someone has just met me. I have felt that every time I have ever approached. Not the rejection, but I felt my friend is doing it. Hallelujah. Nobody told me, he said, What's your feeling? Before you go to preach, there's a bad spirit. There's a bad spirit in that church. No way. I've been under such great, immense pressures of time. The cord to the microphone is wrapped up, coiled up on the floor in one place one time. Under so much pressure, I felt like the bulls of Bashan were around me. And I looked down and I could see the cord. I said to my doctor, what's going on? I said, you're under pressure, son. You're under immense pressure. What do we do? Have I always reacted and responded correctly in those times? No, I have not. And all I know from experience is going to run to the rock. Amen. Amen. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it. And us. I like him. He's my friend. Amen. He puts his arm around us. And he coaches me. And he mentors me. And he helps me to get through every day. And I like when he comes and says to me, don't do the act. It's only a day of work. You can come home and fight with Kitty. I throw that in there. I don't know. Listen, friends. He's here tonight. I, I could hardly keep myself from weeping during the person. Because up front here, everywhere in the sanctuary. My brother, children. My friend. Praise God. My Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know what to do. I go to him. Praise God. Hallelujah. When the going gets rough, I go to Jesus. Hallelujah. When the mean get mean, 
I cry out to Jesus. Praise God. When the mockers mock, set your face like a flint and cry out to him who is able to sing. And do so with strong crying and tears. Because one day, if we like Jesus, will for the joy set before us, consider that one day, one day, friends, a reality, it's hard to imagine. One day we will stand at the pearly gates, and the gates will open. One day. Come on in here. Get in here. Oh, come on in here. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Praise God. I had a friend one time say, I don't care if I get a shack in heaven, I'm just going to be so happy to be there with Jesus. Will you stand with me tonight? Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, 